Psychology Wizard, Badly and Hitch 1974, Working Memory Evaluated. Welcome back to Working Memory. There it is, the familiar diagram. Let me just recap. Uh, you have the central executive in charge of your working memory. It governs a couple of slave systems. On the left you have the visuospatial sketch pad that handles visual memory. On the right the phonological loop that handles acoustic memory. And Badly in 2000 introduced a third slave system, the episodic buffer, which blends visual and acoustic information together to produce episodes of memory, which can then be stored in long-term memory. Okay. That's the theory. Now it's time to evaluate and analyse it. This is Assessment Objective 3 for your A-level exam. It's helpful to group the strengths and weaknesses of any theory using this helpful little monomic coda. C stands for credibility, which asks the basic question, should you believe this theory? Is there reason to trust it? Similarly, O for objections. Are there criticisms here? D is for differences, and you should be able to make comparisons between this theory and other theories into memory. And finally, there's applications. A good theory is a useful theory. Credibility, first of all. Well, there's been quite a lot of research into supporting working memory, and a lot of this involves dual task paradigms. These are experiments where participants are exposed to two or more sources of information at once and then have to repeat back or use the information to show that they successfully processed it. Quite often, with dual task paradigms, one of the sources of information will be visual and one will be acoustic and participants don't normally have a problem with that but when the two sources of information involve the same process, such as two visual sources of information or two acoustic sources, well, that does cause problems for participants, and that does suggest that working memory is a credible theory. More broadly, the whole idea of the inner ear and the inner eye feel like good common sense explanations of what memory is like. We're very aware of saying things over and over in our heads in order to hold them in our memory. This is called face validity, when a theory or a study feels right. It has a sort of common sense appeal. It's not just that, however. Brain scans have been carried out. Uh, this is based on a PET scan, which really does show that seeing and hearing is processed in different parts of the brain. And that does suggest that there would be different memory processes associated with them. Here's a little summary, summary of the credibility of working memory. In its favour, it is supported by dual task experiments. It has face validity, common sense appeal. And it's supported by brain imaging, which shows visual and acoustic information being processed in different parts of the brain. Objections, however. Well, there have been a number of cases of interesting individuals with complex brain damage who don't behave in the way that memory theories suggest they should behave. Uh, Badly himself looked into some of these cases of brain damaged patients who weren't able to use their visuospatial sketch pads or their phonological loops but could still uh, repeat back elements of complicated stories. This is a problem for the theory. However, Baddeley himself brought in the episodic buffer as a new slave system to explain this. That is a way of saving the theory. Uh, however, the episodic buffer has been criticised for its vagueness. The model, of course, is based on lab experiments, the dual task paradigm. Most of these are very artificial. Of course, in real life, such as a real cocktail party, you won't just use sight and sound. You'll um, have all of your senses operating. Uh, you'll be listening to somebody, but also paying attention to body language. In real life, we seem to use memory rather differently from the way we use it in lab experiments. And if these experiments lack 
ecological validity, well then theories based on these experiments won't explain how memory works in real life situations. And there you have the objections to working memory, examples of brain damaged patients who can encode and retrieve episodic memory. However, the reply to this would be Baddeley's innovation of the episodic buffer. And then another criticism that the supporting studies lack ecological validity. Differences. Well, let's compare working memory to the multi-store model, and they have a lot in common. They're both linear models of memory. They both involve the sensory store and long-term memory. What mo working memory does, and this is different, is replace the short-term memory store with something rather more complicated. Working memory is a very successful theory. Um, it's been added to the episodic buffer introduced in 2000. Multi-store model is fixed and hasn't been developed greatly since the 1970s, so this would be another difference between the two. Another theory of memory is reconstructive memory, which involves schemas. Working memory may have some similarities to this as well, since it would be the central executive that creates and retrieves schemas. This might be working memory incorporating and improving on other theories. So, differences in working memory. It's similar to the multi-store model because of sensory register and long-term memory. But it's different from the multi-store model because it has much more detail on short-term memory processes and the central executive shows that memory is intelligent. It has some similarities to reconstructive memory because the central executive may be the part of memory that uses schemas. Finally then, applications. Well, working memory is very useful for advising us on how best to memorize things, particularly how best to revise things. One of the key bits of advice it gives us is make sure you don't have conflicting sources of information going on um, while you are trying to process something visually, like reading your notes, don't have another sort of visual information in the room, like the television on. The model may also have some application for helping people with dementia. Uh, the episodic buffer seems to help people who uh, can't encode memories uh, in long-term memory, and cognitive stimulation has been introduced to help strengthen the episodic buffer. Uh, this often means uh, getting dementia sufferers together and triggering their memories by, well, playing an old song. So, there we are, the applications of working memory. Study without conflicting stimulation. And cognitive stimulation therapy for dementia sufferers. Well, that concludes our evaluation of the working memory model by Badley and Hitch. I think we can conclude broadly it is a very successful psychological theory. It has been developed and expanded. It draws in many of the ideas from other psychological theories of memory and improves on them. It has some criticisms, but a great deal of useful, practical applications. Thank you for watching the video. More Psychology Wizard videos will follow on other psychological themes.